Hey guys, Infidel1258 here tonight. I have two questions for you. And they come from my comment section. If you guys want your questions answered, drop them in the comment section. Leave the word question, drop your IGN, which is your name. And I'll send you a thank you after. If you're new to the channel, my name is Dwayne Cunningham and I go by Infidel1258. We cover Splinterlands every day because it's... Let's get into a couple questions here. I've got two that are connected in one respect. I want to show you them. First was from Yellow. Yellow. Yellow has left multiple comments. Really good at that. So thank you, first of all, Yellow, for supporting the channel in that way. It helps drive content. And more than that, it's almost always, if you've got a question, it's going to be something that others are going to share and desire to know. So thank you for that, my dude. He says, question. He gives his in-game name there. Wayne, for players with experience like you, but... With a good financial situation, let's say you wanted to make a new account with similar power with the cards you have, what would be what would you be buying and passing on right now? Would summoners like Kitty, etc. be bought by you? Or what would you do? What level would you reach for, I guess, is what he's saying there. Or let's say for some reason your account got hacked, you lost your cards and you wanted to start over, what would you do? How would you start? Certain cards are overpriced, not worth it. Yeah. Okay. I mean, that's a super complicated question. I'm going to try and spend about five to 10 minutes on this. Probably it's going to be closer to 10 minutes. And then I have a second question that I want to ask from answer from Yuki here. Uh, he said he saw somebody uh, discussing Waka's price. He said it was being, you know, is it comparable to four plots of land, which is roughly true. That's roughly true because it's, it's 5,000 SPS and 500 vouchers, which is roughly 1,750 US dollars, which is roughly four plots of land. So I'm gonna finish with the Upwaka and essentially what do I prefer for, a, if I had $1,700 right now, would I buy four, four plot, plots of land or would I buy Waka and why? And that's gonna tie into the first question because of course Waka is one of the cards and it would be something you'd wanna consider if you were gonna start over from scratch, try and achieve like a champion level deck. Let's get into the Peak Monsters site and we're going to look at some cards and we're going to talk for about 10 minutes about building a deck and, and aiming high, aiming at champ, because that's where I want to play. That's where I do play. That's what I'm going to talk about aiming at. And I'm going to show, show you, first of all, I have one, two, three, four, five, six accounts, 250,000 power, 280,000, 225, 235. That is collection power is almost all mine with a little bit of exceptions on the time and attention to delegated from some of the other guild mates which is to say i have one probably 3.5 million power myself and that 250,000 power is going to be enough to get you up in diamond you need 150,000 power to get to diamond 3 it's much more expensive up to diamond one champions 500,000 500,000 plus if you were to try and aim at 500,000 you're going to be spending like i can show you roughly very quickly it is finished is valued at thirteen thousand dollars and then i grab one more of my small the cunningham is valued at nine thousand dollars that's $22,000 that you need to buy to get a $500,000 or 500,000 collection power champion level deck. And what would I buy? I would absolutely, and I say this all the time, it's not a secret. And if you've been here for a while, it won't surprise you, but you need to hear me. You don't go looking for the cards that are overpowered. You don't go looking for the cards that meta. He asked specifically about Kitty. No way, no way would I be buying a kitty. The cost to utility is just not there. You need 500,000 collection power. If you buy kitty, especially at a level three or four, by, by itself, that gonna cost you? It's gonna cost you probably four grand. By itself, just for a level three, by the way to be there's a max level one for seven thousand dollars that's a hard pass now 
does that mean I think Kitty's a bad summoner? Oh, it doesn't. If that, if you, if you hear me and you think, oh, he, he what he's saying is Kitty's bad, Kitty's not worth it, you're not really listening. What I'm actually saying is there are better ways to utilize your money to move the needle in a bigger way. And and when I say bigger way, you have to unpack that in a. There's so much depth there. It's like you need collection power. You need a multitude of cards that will give you a lot of options on the battle league. You need to have. A, you need to have a diversity of. Of cards from a variety of uh, from a variety of decks, and so there's a ton of different things you could spend money on to make yourself better at this game, give yourself a stronger deck, and this is one of them. But the cost to reward is just not there, in my opinion. And someone is going to say, "Well, Kitty's so powerful, it's worth it," and I would say, "Okay, maybe if you." already have your deck sorted out but if you've got seven thousand dollars burning a hole in your pocket there's other ways you could spend that we talked about land a moment ago we talked about waka a moment ago maybe those are some interesting ways where you could deploy some value and really stretch what that could look like for you yodin's amazing all of these legendary summoners are amazing i wouldn't none of them i'm not interested period i would strongly tell you to come get yourself a quix quix has got to be Right there. 300. Like I'm buying. I'm buying that. Yeah. I don't want some. Okay. So I'm not buying it right now. But Quix is the absolute. You got to get it. If you're starting over now. And you're and you're looking at champion. You need to have a max level Quix. I guess I would just get a regular foil. Because again. I'm trying to stretch my money. I would get. All of the uh, the summoners from Champion or from um, Chaos, and I would get an exceptional Chaos Legion deck. So let's say summoners you're talking fifteen times three, so three hundred bucks, six hundred bucks, call it a thousand, nine nine hundred to thousand. You're probably talking. 1800 i'm gonna say you need about 1800 and then three you probably need 2100 to max out all of these summoners and i would do it that's the first thing i would do and then i would go through and i would buy tanks for all of the splinters one to two tanks per splinter and you i would be looking at the cheapest ones don't talk to me about you know who's the best who's the most powerful you know which ones are the you know the greatest synergy just get a deck that's together that's 500,000 power um, and make sure you have the basics one tank one support one carry from each splinter and then after you've done that then go back and revisit which ones do I really like playing like do I love playing the water splinter Then come back and spend more money there getting extra carry cards getting extra tanks getting extra support monsters to build out that one as your ace that's what I would do. That's the recipe I would follow. And that would lead me to a 500,000 collection power very easily. And you might not need 500,000 collection power because you would need 500 collection power in the old, in, in the current league. But we know that modern war, modern format is going to have a different power setting, which it might mean that you might need 350 or 400,000 collection power. So perhaps you could, you could rain, pull back the reins a bit by 400,000 collection power and just wait and see how that goes. But I think I think with these cards, the question is getting at not just how would you build a deck, but the question is getting at how would you rekindle the the financial win that you've you've that I've accumulated over the three years of my playing. So I want to finish his point on this on that topic. Um, so I kind of talked to you about how which cards would I buy and why now. Can you rekindle? Can you recreate the success I've had over the last three years? My answer is a definitive and a resounding yes. That's why I always say this game has changed my life and I think it could change yours. That is not a, a get rich quick get rich quick scheme. It's an it's a it's a an assurance that over a long enough time horizon, 
if you're investing your time and attention within the game this rewards you for you know not with non-fungible tokens and cryptocurrency that you're going to accrue value and it's an it's an i'm making a statement about how these deflationary assets these cards you're receiving are going to go up in value and so if you you were to take what the investment advice that i provided a moment ago with how i would build a deck and you went and bought full max copies of those summoners and you bought and right now by the way because these prices are very reasonable they could go lower that doesn't matter to me if it, he's asking me what would i do i'm telling you i would buy these summoners right now and I'd get them all max level to the highest levels and i'd buy the best i'd buy all the cheapest um legendaries epics rares and commons and i would make sure that each of my splinters was was built out and i believe that the, because of the the nature of these cards that there are only so many printed ever that they're constantly being reduced in number due to the the way that you grow them you, you push them together to make higher and higher levels and then simultaneously the growing population of the game player base that tells me that these cards can be worth more so I believe I sold. I told you at the beginning. I think it'd, it'd be about twenty-two thousand bucks to get four hundred thousand, five hundred thousand power. And that'd be a really good deck, and that might be enough to be in champion in the modern format. And it would be pretty high in diamond in the wild format. And I think it's going to be fun, functional, and a great long-term investment because I'm, I instructed you to go out and buy the cheapest uh, cards that are on the marketplace now. Because one, they're they're going to be functional, they're going to be fun, and three, and three, they are going to appreciate because all assets in this game, all non fungible tokens in this game, appreciate due to their deflationary nature. Okay, that's what I that's what I want to say to you, and that's how I would handle it, and that's how I would return, I'd recreate what I've already done here with three years. It might take three more years or four more years because buying Shadow Snitch today. It's not going to go up till you know four dollars in the next couple of weeks that's it that that's that's not even close to reality even the best cards in here some of these legendaries that are probably really inexpensive and probably one day will be 10 times or even 20 times more expensive i believe that but that that could be four years away and so i would be willing to be patient for that period of time i would come in and buy all these things without any sort of guarantee of that future price appreciation, but I would trust that it's coming because of my view on what is happening with the with the fiat currency in the world, and, and you know all of the, go the global governments just printing money like it's going out of style. Quantitative easing, um, you know, mandatory inflation policies, like tr literally trying to make inflation happen. All of that leads to limited assets skyrocketing in value across time. That's gold, that's silver, that's housing, that's land, that's non-fungible tokens that are utility-based. Um, and so I believe that is the recipe to returning from a zero from a zero starting point up to, you know, across maybe four years, a place where this game has literally transformed your financial future. That's that's my view on how this is possible. And and you might say twenty thousand dollars is way too much money. I can't possibly do that. It's too risky. It's just a game. Why would I do that? okay then that all this advice is for you i'm the question was directed to me what would i do if i somehow lost my cards or if i needed to start over today i would absolutely take 20 ground and do what i just said because i think i'll be here in four years and i think this game will be crushing it in four years and i think that would be the life-changing opportunity that that i would want to be behind and that's why i'm still here by the way that's that's, I'm not just talking about a theoretical story. I'm telling you what I'm actually doing because I, I literally have 3.5 million power in this game. And I, you know, I have 88,000 in my main account and I don't even know. I, I showed you the other two accounts was 20,000 or so. So I must have 150,000 bucks worth of cards here. Not to mention my four 5,000 Chaos Legion packs that I haven't opened. Not to mention all the airdrop cards I haven't received, but I'm going to receive soon. Not to mention the 10 plots of land that I still have left. So I believe in the game and I would definitely throw 20 grand at it if I had no exposure to this. If you don't have that, that's fine. Understand that there are different paths down the same road, like they're heading to the same destination. Like Agrid says, we're all going to the same moon. Some of you are going to be, 
it's going to be more modest of a victory. But if you put in $100 or even just the $10 for the account and you played the game every day, that will for sure multiply into something significant over that four year time window. But you have to have the patience and most of you don't. I know you don't because the viewership on the on the channel has been going down and on all channels has been going down. So there's there's a fickleness here where you guys don't really want some of you don't want to be patient. You want to be a millionaire. You want to be a big you want to have the big victory now. And if it's not right now, there are some comments and I see it in the town hall this morning. I saw the town hall. I see comments like this game's a scam. And, you know, these people who feel that way are wishing that they could have won big last November, October. And because the crisis fell from that point to this point, it didn't work out and they're now bitter. But if you set that aside, and I've told you this guys lots of times in lots of videos, if you set that aside and understand that this was never a get rich, get rich quick scheme. But in fact, it's a, it's a, it's like a, it's going to reward you with trivial daily rewards for your time and attention. And that those can be meaningful as they accumulate and snowball. That is the recipe and that's the reality. And so I hope that's interesting. And I hope, hope you feel that answers your question, my dude. And I, I want to close with, um, how would I, how would I, with the idea of starting over from scratch, how would I incorporate, how would I view land? How much, how big of a portion of my investment might that include? And Waka, is he worth it or would I buy land? Let's talk about that. First. Okay, thank you for the comment, Yellow. Appreciate it. And then Yuki, thank you for your comment also. Again, what? I saw someone was saying that Waka's price was is comparable to four plots of land. What are your thoughts on four plots versus Waka? So, again, from the standpoint of, because you know, very few people have three million power in the game. So I'm, I'm trying to put myself in a more broadly applicable mindset. You know, maybe you're playing in silver, maybe you're playing in gold. Most of my, I guess most of my followers play in gold. That's what I found from a recent survey. So let's say you got a hundred thousand power and you're playing in gold and you're renting a little bit of season kind of make sure you solidify that position. I'm not convinced I would be spending $1,700 on Waka. Even though Waka is very exciting and probably, I think, overpowered. And lastly, um, when you buy a Waka, you actually get a, a, a non-fungible token that you don't yet know is whether it's gold or regular foil. So the you could spend $1,700 on a, on a Waka and it'd be gold foil. 4% of people, will that will happen to them. And the idea that that might happen to you is literally makes this thing a lottery ticket. Because the gold foil walk is going to be five to ten thousand dollars instantly, in my opinion. And the seventeen hundred dollar ticket price that you're going to pay to buy that waka is obviously, you know, worth it if you get the gold foil. If you get the regular foil, I'm going to say it's probably pretty close to you know the right price. I think waka regular foil might sell for as low as fifteen hundred bucks and maybe as high as twenty bucks. Um. That's my guess for regular for gold. I think five to ten thousand dollars. I think ten really. Five would be conservative. So Waka is probably a good deal for seventeen hundred dollars. But does that mean you should buy one at gold or silver? Because that's most people. I think the answer is probably no. And so then I've read lots of comments around Waka, and they talk about how this is just for whales, and they're kind of angry because, man, this game doesn't even get it. They're just giving these amazing opportunities to whales and I don't get any opportunities. And I, I think you're blind to the opportunities all around you. We just talked about how some of the most amazing cards in the game ever created are available on the marketplace right now. And they're practically free. Three cents, four cents, five cents for these amazing common cards. Pelicor Mercenary, definitely one of them. One of the, this will, this thing will be definitive there will come a time where this is meta. I'm certain of that. It's so good. The win rate is so high on that card, by the way. And um, 
I'm pretty sure Aggie shared the win rate on the Pelicor Merchant and it was like 75 or 80 percent. But also, there will come a time where this thing is not a, re a reward card that you're receiving. And when that happens, the price on these things goes up. You all think it's free, it's cheap, it's meaningless. Who cares? I'm getting it for free. I'll just sell it for three cents. You're wrong. That's a terrible plan. Stop it. You're giving away valuable assets when you sell this thing for three cents. There's no way, there's no way that this card, that that 3.7 cents is gonna help ship, ship a do more than this card long-term. No way. I'm gonna go ahead and do this. Yeah, we're just gonna go ahead and buy all of those are 400, 400, 400, 200, 200, 200. No, these are, these, that's ridiculous. I won't stand for it. I just bought probably 3,000 BCX of, of this card. There's no way it's it's worth three cents, guys. It's a bad trade. Keep the card and just sit on it for the next three years if, if you have to. That's, that's the play. Don't get, sell these things for nothing. You're gonna regret it and and so could you buy could you could walk change your 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 game yes walk is going to be a very powerful summoner and it, you're going to wish you had one but at the same time you're going to wish you had a lot of things you, you might wish you had more pelicor mercenaries you might wish you had land plots you might wish you had more chaos legion packs you can't have everything that you might want so forget about waka if you're in the gold range if you're in the silver range Think about Waka. If you're in the diamond or the champ range, you're going to really, really find a lot of value out of that. It's going to be super powerful at every level. And you're going to, everyone's going to wish they won't, they had one, but there's only a thousand. And, you know, if you didn't already have a diamond level deck fully built out, I don't know why you'd even be considering a walk. And, and so that's, even though I think walk is amazing, I think, forget it. Use the $1,700 in other ways to grow your deck so that you reach from silver or gold into higher levels, possibly diamond, possibly champion, depending on where you're already st you're starting at. So, Waka is going to be awesome, but he's not really for you if you're going to be if you're already in, if you're just in silver right now. Focus on other investments to get the collection power up so that you can reach into higher levels and un unlock bigger and bigger rewards. And then land. Would I buy four plots of land or would I buy Waka? Well, I actually want to talk about it from the perspective of, the, of what we just said. When we were talking about stretching the dollar and, and moving the needle for your investment within Splinterlands, I really don't think the play is Waka or land. I think it's, I think it's, it's what is the most affordable asset within Splinterlands right now? And how, and how can that, you know, move the needle for my success? It's absolutely the cards. It's absolutely the cards. It's not SPS, it's not DC, it's not land, it's not Chaos Legion packs. It's cards off the marketplace. And you're all you've been wait you've all been waiting. The new players and the old. Everyone has been waiting for these cards to reach the the, the bottom, the basement floor. They they you've been saying for weeks, months even. It's October. I'll wait. I've been waiting until Chaos Legion packs go on sale, and then I know the cards prices are gonna go down because there's gonna be a lot of new cards being listed. That's happened. Prices are low. In fact, they've been ticking up quite a bit recently. I'm going to say card prices are probably up 25% in a month. So your opportunity is in front of you right now. And that's why I've been actively buying constantly because I see the opportunity. I've seen it before. Take my advice. If you, if you, if you enjoy this game and if you are, are willing to be patient, like over a three, four year time horizon, I think holding these cards is the best thing you could do. For not not land, not unless you already have a deck. Not Waka, not unless you already have an amazing deck. The first stepping stone for this for any investor in this game is getting a functional deck. Actually, no. Before that is it's it's answering this question: Do you believe in the direction and development of this game? Do you believe that this game is fun to play? If the answer to those questions is yes, then the first and only consideration is how do I build a cheap and affordable deck that's going to have maximum utility 
to allow me to fight in say gold or even diamond so that I can maximize the re rewards because those rewards are going to snowball every day, week, season, month, and year so that you can get a huge amount of money in four years when these three cent cards are $3. Okay. That's how I feel about it. I feel very strongly about it. I've seen it happen before. I'm convinced it's going to happen again. And that's why I'm holding so many assets and why I just buying, I'm buying, buying, buying. And I go through and I'm like, too small for me to even care about it. Really. When I see those, all those Pelicor mercenaries on the market there, I've been doing it with the golds too. go through like, All the, the max level ones because, or halfway ones, because when you get to be kind of as big as me, you don't like want a bunch of ones. It'd be too hard to manage later. But if I get a bunch of max level copies, I can put them on, on um, scholarship accounts, which by the way, if my members would like a scholarship account, DM me. If you know, t time and attention, time and attention, uh, guild members would like a scholarship account dm me open for business okay i am gonna wrap it there thank you guys so much for your time and attention and i hope that my answers were helpful clear like i said drop a comment after the on this video and i'll be glad to answer whatever it is you're inquiring about okay guys that's it for now have an amazing night god bless